avoidant versus anxious, who really suffers more after breakup. You're measuring suffering wrong if you think pain is the same as damage. Research from the University of Toronto's Attachment Lab shows that anxious and avoidant individuals experience breakup pain in completely opposite timelines. 64% of anxious partners suffering intensely immediately, while 58% of avoidants experience their deepest pain months or even years later. By the end, you'll understand exactly who suffers more, and the answer will change how you see your own healing. The first two weeks, opposite realities, it starts the moment the relationship ends. For the anxious partner, the suffering is immediate and overwhelming. Your chest physically hurts. You can't eat, can't sleep. Every song is a trigger. You check your phone obsessively, hoping for a text that never comes. You replay every conversation, blaming yourself for everything. If only I had been less needy. If only I had given them more space. You write messages you don't send. You check their social media constantly, analyzing every post for hidden meanings. Are they sad? Have they moved on? Meanwhile, the avoidance seems completely fine. They're out with friends, at the gym, working on projects. From the outside, it looks like you meant nothing. But here's what you don't see. The avoidant isn't fine. They're suffering differently. Their pain shows up as numbness, as emptiness they can't name. In those first days, they feel genuine relief. The pressure is gone. No more difficult conversations. No more guilt. They tell themselves this is what they wanted. Freedom, independence, space to breathe. They throw themselves into distractions. They reorganize their apartment take on extra projects, download dating apps. They're trying to prove they made the right choice. But underneath, there's a quiet voice asking what I just do. They push it down because avoidance have spent their entire lives learning how to not feel things. Week three to six, the shift begins. Around week three, the anxious partner starts functioning again. You go back to work properly. You eat a full meal for the first time. The pain is still constant and heavy, but you're learning to carry it. You start posting on social media again, not to make them jealous, but to remind yourself you still exist outside this pain. The avoidance sees these posts. They tell themselves they don't care, but they look. They check your profile more than they'd admit. Seeing you smile creates an uncomfortable feeling they quickly suppress. They thought they'd feel nothing, but your absence is starting to register. By week six, you're deep in processing. You're not just sad, you're angry. How could they give up so easily? But you're also seeing the relationship more clearly. You remember the times they went silent, made you feel crazy for wanting basic communication, pulled away right when you got close. You're beginning to understand it wasn't all your fault. You start recognizing your own patterns too. How you chose someone unavailable, because unavailable feels familiar. How you mistook their distance for mystery. The avoidant is still in their distraction phase, but cracks are forming. They see something funny and reach for their phone to text you before remembering they can't. These moments are brief, but they're accumulating. Month three, when everything inverts. Around month three, the anxious partner is genuinely healing. You've stopped checking their social media obsessively. You've maybe even gone on a date, not to replace them, but to remind yourself you're still desirable. You're rediscovering who you were before them. The pain is background noise now instead of the main event. You're also doing something crucial, looking at your own patterns. Why you chose someone emotionally unavailable. Why you tried so hard to earn love that should have been freely given. You're connecting it to your childhood, to how you learned that affection was conditional. This awareness is painful, but it's powerful. The avoidant at month three is just starting to really feel the breakup. While you're healing, they're breaking. Everything they suppressed is hitting them now. The loneliness isn't just missing you. It's realizing they've been lonely their entire life. In every relationship, they sabotaged. In every connection, they kept shallow. They're experiencing what therapists call deactivation regret. They're realizing they pushed away something real because of fear. They replay moments where you try to connect and they shut down. Times you needed reassurance, and they made you feel needy. They're starting to see their role, and it's crushing. Some avoidance reach out during this phase, usually around month three to six. A casual text, 
Hey, how have you been? They're testing if you're still there, if the door is still open, if you respond warmly. Their anxiety decreases immediately. Oh, good. Nothing has really changed. And once they feel safe, they remember why they left. Within days or weeks, they pull away again. But if you don't respond or respond distantly, their suffering intensifies. Because now they're facing real loss. Not the idea of loss, but the reality that you've moved on. That they can't just come back when they're ready. This creates pain they've never let themselves feel before. Month 6 to 9, the final divergence. By month 6, the anxious partner who did the work is thriving. You've rebuilt your life. You've learned that love shouldn't feel like constant anxiety. You're dating people who are actually available, and you're not running when it feels too easy. You've learned that calm can coexist with love. You look back with clarity. You see both of your roles. Yes, they were avoidant and couldn't give you what you needed. But you also chose someone unavailable because unavailable felt familiar. You own your part without shame, and that ownership has set you free. The avoidant at this point either finally does the work or doubles down. Some hit rock bottom with their loneliness. They go to therapy, read about attachment, begin connecting their behavior to childhood wounds. They start understanding their independence isn't strength. It's a defense mechanism against abandonment. This avoidance suffers deeply during growth. They have to sit with the discomfort of vulnerability. They have to admit they were wrong. They grieve not just you, but every relationship they destroyed the same way. This is different from your pain. It's deep, existential pain of realizing you've been living your whole life wrong. But other avoidants reject this path. The truth is too painful, so they bury it. They convince themselves the relationship failed because of compatibility, not fear. They jump into new relationships, feel initial excitement, then watch the same pattern emerge. They feel constant low-level emptiness that never fully heals. The real answer... So who suffers more? The anxious partner suffers more intensely at the beginning. Your pain is immediate, overwhelming, all-consuming. But because you feel it fully, you process it fully. By six months to a year, if you do the work, you're genuinely healed. The avoidance suffers less at the beginning, but more over time. Their pain is delayed, suppressed, denied. When it catches up, it's not just about losing you. It's about recognizing a lifetime pattern of pushing everyone away. If they don't do the work, their suffering becomes chronic, a dull ache that follows them through every relationship and every year of their life. The real tragedy is that both of you are suffering from the same wound, just expressed differently. The anxious partner suffers from fear of abandonment. The avoidant suffers from fear of engulfment. Both fears come from childhood experiences of inconsistent love. Both of you are just trying to protect yourselves from being hurt again. The question isn't who suffers more. The question is who uses the suffering to grow. The breakup isn't a competition. It's a mirror showing both of you where you need to heal. The anxious partner needs to learn they're worthy without external validation. The avoidant needs to learn that connection is safe. Suffering is just information. For the anxious partner, it says, Stop abandoning yourself for people who can't meet you. For the avoidant, it says, stop running from the very thing you need. Both messages are equally important. The gift hidden inside the suffering isn't getting them back or proving you were right. It's become the kind of person who no longer needs to repeat these painful patterns. The kind who can recognize unavailable people and walk away early. The kind who can handle intimacy without panic. The kind who suffers less in future relationships because you finally learned the lessons this one came to teach you.